Uh, all right, so let's talk about the payload because it's obviously a, a very um, a different design. Mm -hmm. What does it do differently because it has this design? What? So, um, when you look at the payload, I mean, we need to differentiate the different systems we have here. Here we have two stereoscopic cameras mounted on a pitch axis gimbal. These two stereoscopic cameras are made to do the sense and avoid obstacle avoidance. Um, how does it work? They will constantly move in the same direction as the drone, which is kind of like unusual to see. When you see the product fly with the obstacle avoidance on, you will see as soon as it's moving up, the camera is going to face up and then down, forward, backward. Mm. And so this system is kind of constantly moving and people are not used to have something moving on the drone when the drone is actually operating. Um, and the way it works is that we have very, very wide uh, sensors here on both sides, which are actually also made not to see these cameras. So this is how, and this is why we have these design and these angles in terms of camera positioning. Mm -hmm. And so these two cameras are gonna, are gonna do this in the different direction of the drones. And so they're gonna see what's around, map it, and send the order to the drone to sense and avoid. In Free Flight 7 app, you have the ability to actually switch and see exactly the 3D modeling being processed by these cameras when flying. It's something that we share with the users because it's pretty amazing. Um, so that's, that's the sense and the voice system in these two cameras. This camera is the main camera. So it's your camera. It's the camera you're going to use to capture pictures, videos, and data all around. Um, it's mounted on a three-axis uh, gimbal. Plus, we do digital stabilization. So just a, just a side note here, we've been doing digital stabilization since quite a long time. If you remember the Bebop drone, mm -hmm. the Bebop drone was a fisheye lens and the video was stabilized without a gimbal. And people were like, I don't understand how you stabilize a, a picture without a gimbal because you have a fisheye lens. So you have space to, to crop basically and stabilize the video. And so we, we kept this technology and we still use it. So in this drone, even if we have a three axis gimbal, mechanical, we also have a three axis digital stabilization and we blend them together. Mm. Um, the sensor is half inch sensor, 48 megapixel sensor, um, capable of zooming six times digital. And so back to what we were saying, this is exactly the type of sensors you could use to look at something up close. You're next to a power pole, you're next to a, a utility a line, um, a building, a facade, you want to inspect with it. The drone can actually come very up close safely with the obstacle avoidance, stay there, and you can move the camera all the way up, all the way down, because we have it's mounted on this, on this gimbal, mm. and then zoom in. So yeah, this is the, the, the system that we've been developing in terms of camera. And I think from feedback that I've, I've heard over the years with uh, unmanned technologies is the ability to look up, up and even beyond up yeah. allows you to do different kinds of inspections that most drones previously with gimbals uh, hanging on the bottom were unable to do. I think that that's important to point out, as well as the obstacle avoidance when you mentioned that it, there's that live th 3D map. So you could basically pilot and see, you know, make sure that it is detecting all the obstacles around. Mm -hmm. I think that a common question would be, what about things like power lines or branches on trees where they maybe are sticking out and they're not a, a huge mass? Do, does it see that as well? So it, it very much depends on the thickness of the elements you're considering. Mm. If it's a, a very, very thin wire, it might not see it. Uh, but usually with trees, for example, uh, it's actually the trees, the branches, the leaves, and so it become kind of a, a block yeah. of something that the drone would identify and avoid. Um, so it does a very good job at that. And as you said, use, if users want to have fun and just double check if it's picking it up or yeah. not, they can actually see this from the app directly. Yeah, that was the first thing I was thinking is if I took this outside, I'd be like, you know, how, how hard can I push that, that obstacle yeah. avoidance? What things will it see and not see? So. Uh, I think we covered everything on as far as the optics. Oh, you mentioned the one uh, half inch sensor. Yes. So the industry 
has been trained to be like one inch sensor is superior. Uh, one inch sensor, you know, it's larger so that you're getting more clarity. But we talked yesterday about how that's not necessarily the case and there's a more of a tactical reason why you would potentially want a half inch sensor. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so it's actually, it's, you know, the, it's the effectiveness of or, um, or, or the efficacy of the sensor with the results you're getting that matters at the mm. end of the day.